Oral answer and the first question stands in the name of the Honourable Annette King. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is to the Minister of Finance. When he said recently, quote, where the government does have some influence, we are working hard to keep prices low, end quote, which prices was he referring to? The Honourable Bill English. Mr Speaker, I was referring to um, specific examples such as interest rates. We've worked hard to control government spending so we don't put upward pressure on interest rates. Floating mortgage rates are about 5 per cent below uh, where they were under the past previous government. The ETS, we've put in place a system that halved the costs of the ETS. Electricity, we've increased competition so households don't face a 72 per cent price rise as they did up to 2008. And we've worked hard to bring uh, the out-of-control ACC scheme under, under control so that levies don't have to keep increasing. The Supplementary Annette question. King. If, as he claimed on Sunday, that the government was working hard to keep prices low, why did he allow government-controlled prices such as car and motorbike registration, ACC levies, early childhood education fees, GST, doctor's visits, to name but a few, go up at a time when economic commentators are saying households could face a period of significant misery in New Zealand? The Honourable Billing. Well, Mr Speaker, we've had to strike a balance between recognising that pressure on households on the one hand and cleaning up the mess left by the previous Labor government. For instance, the car licensing system was tens of millions of dollars in deficit, and we're doing our best to close that massive deficit in the car licensing system at, without passing on all the costs uh, to licence holders. The Sub Honourable supplementary Annette question, Mr Speaker. What ac action will the government take to control petrol prices now they've reached $2.15 a litre Something national demanded the previous government to do when the price reached $2.03 a litre, and something that an opposition national thought obviously the government could do something about. The Honourable Billings. Well, Mr Speaker, unlike the previous Labor government, we don't claim to be able to control everything. And Consumers, uh, consumers and households are doing their best to deal with rising oil prices and as the member knows the government doesn't have too much influence over Colonel Gaddafi but maybe the Labor government, maybe the Labor Party does. The, the Honourable Annette King. What action will the government take to reduce the cost of milk to New Zealand families? which has gone up by 37 cents a two-litre bottle since John Key said in 2008 that families had to ration milk to their children because of the price and that the then Labor government should do something about it. The Honourable Bill English. Well, Mr Speaker, uh, as the uh, member will know, New Zealand is a beneficiary of high commodity prices. Uh, we, more, more, more people want to pay us more for more of our product than ever before, and some of those prices are reflected in domestic prices. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. To the Minister of Finance, what is the outlook for inflation, and how does this compare with past inflation? The Honourable Bill English. Well, Mr. Speaker, of course, there's been a spike in inflation because of the increase in GST. But if you look at Reserve Bank forecasts for this calendar year, they are projecting inflation of 2.3%. In 2012, 2.2%, 2 2013, 2.5%. This is about, over those three years, each year is about half the rate that inflation was at in 2008 when Labor left office, which is why no one believes them when they complain about rising prices. The A supplementary Annette question, Kent. Mr Speaker. If New Zealanders are better off following the tax cuts and the wage increases he constantly claims, can he explain why people are feeling the impact of food, uh, grocery, accommodation, insurance, petrol rises um, at their fastest rate than almost 20 years? And does he believe people are just making it up when they say that they are facing a struggle at this time? The Honourable Billings. Well, Mr Speaker, they feel those prices because they're out there every day doing their shopping and paying their bills. And and they haven't all had significant wage increases, 
but they have had after-tax increases in their wages. The, me the member seems to be going down the track of, I think it was the Herald on Sunday, who tried to claim that inflation was at the same kind of rates it was uh, back in the mid-80s, when it was actually 17 or 18 per cent. Current inflation is actually around 2 to 3 per cent. Question number two, David Bennett. Ms. My question is. We've dealt with that question. Number two, Mr. David. Speaker, my question is to the Minister of Finance. What are some of the likely impacts on the government's finances of the Christchurch earthquake? The Honourable Bill English. Mr. Speaker, uh, well, first of all, we have to get. Um, as the weeks go by, we're getting better information about the costs of the earthquake. But a couple of things are clear already. The first is that the earthquake is likely to delay slightly uh, the New Zealand government's return to budget surplus.